So I'm getting a good feeling from this. I feel like, you know, the, the IRS system is pushed down uh, quite significantly. And this indicates that the silver point is poking through that window uh, much more. And I give it a good tighten up. Remember, it's, it's left to tighten it up. And then um, I give it a tiny, tiny little wiggle, a bit of a tug, and then push, we push it out. And there we have it. This is the first silver point. And you can see here, so have we got an absolutely cracking case for you today. Um, I've, I'm really glad that I managed to get this on video because um, I don't often see a lot of pit silver point removal uh, uh, nowadays. Um, I suppose in a way, you know, the, the, the fact of placing silver points as an obturation material probably went out of vogue maybe 30 or even 40 years ago. But every now and again, you know, I get an external referral from a dentist where they've got a failing root canal and there's silver points in it. But before we get on with the case, what I do want to do is I just want to draw your attention to the fact that when we look at the analytics of the channel on YouTube, around 50 to 60 percent of the viewership who watch these videos, who like these videos are not subscribed. So what I would ask you to do, if you could, is dead, f dead easy. It's free, it's just subscribe to the channel. And if you subscribe to the channel, I will continue to provide you with this excellent content, lots of learning, and I thank you. And, um, you know, I suppose when you look at these types of cases, especially if you are a, uh, um, a less experienced dentist, you might think that this tooth is absolutely, um, completely unrestorable, and you'd never, ever um, kind of uh, take a case on like this. And I hope today, you know, if you're a budding endodontist, I can give you a few tips on how to remove these silver points. Um, you know, I was taught really to get some really, really strong locking tweezers to pull these out. But in this case, I'm using an IRS system. And I feel like the IRS system, um, it's, 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 it's a little bit easier. Um, mainly because uh, in this case, uh, the patient had a brand new crown placed on this tooth. And I want to uh, just put it out there. I want to re reserve your judgments to why that crown was placed in this situation. I think that that, that is obvious. And all I have to do here is just to present the facts, okay? So I knew a, a brand new crown had been placed within the past 12 months rightly or wrongly, um, but um, the, 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 the root canal was less than ideal and was failing. And, and, I, and I just took that as um, this, 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 this root canal needed to, be, needed to be treated. And, you know, you suppose you could, would all also argue that, um, you know, the, uh, the sort of presentation of the, of, of the radiolucency seen on this x-ray here maybe indicate there's probably a crack in this tooth. So, in the first instance, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up the, uh, the, 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 the crown. I'm just going to assess for a crack. And of course, this is all being mentioned to the patients in the consultation appointment. And you'll notice here that I am actually accessing the tooth here without rubber dam. Um, in this case, what I can see here is that I can see kind of where the CEJ might be in the the CEJ is the most important landmark we use to try and find where the uh, the base of the cavity is and where the cavity is. So what I'm doing here is I'm just accessing uh, the tooth here without the rubber dam and straight away I can see some uh, GP. So I know I've got gutta perca. I can place the rubber dam because I'm going to use that gutta perca as a landmark for me to remove the rest of the uh, the, the filling material. You know, if, I, if you can't see GP, then obviously you're in the wrong place. You need to sort of kind of stop. But in this case, I know it's there. We're going to place the rubber dam. Again, I like to put the rubber dam on with the clamp and then just sort of fold the, the, the rubber dam sheet over the wings of the, the clamp and then give it a little bit of a wiggle to seat. And in this case, this is seated nicely and I don't need any sort of liquid down. So we're just going to assess um, the, the, the cavity that I've cut and um, I can see some GP here. So I'm just going to use this as kind of a bit of a marker. It can be really, really difficult to see with your fast hand piece um, uh, where, where you're going. So in these cases, what I want to do is I'm just going to remove a little bit of core amalgam have a little look, remove a bit of core, have a little look, and just slowly kind of negotiate around this cavity here, opening it up. And what you'll notice here is I have removed the core and, you know, a large core of amalgam sort of falls out. And we can see here that we can identify straight away these silver points. You've got one there, and then we just got one there. And this is a, a really nice sign. 
Obviously, if the silver points are uh, buried uh, beneath the canal orifice, you've got a problem. But in this case, you know, these are sticking up. So, you know, I've got something to grab hold of. And the most significant thing about uh, removing silver points is having something to grab hold of because, you know, um, the silver points have been sitting in here for 30 to 40 years and they've corroded onto the canal walls so this is going to be really really jammed in you know in the base of the canal just looks absolutely disgusting it's been festering here for years and years and years so the in the first instance what i'm going to do is i am going to just irrigate with um sodium hypochlorite and again you know you may or may not be surprised at how well sodium hypochlorite kind of just flushes everything out and i'm just going to go for my low hanging fruit now and i'm just going to remove the gp cone in a distal aspect with a h file and i think this is like an early win for you to just get get that out and you know that that's been sorted out and essentially what you do is you just screw in uh, the H file, the headstrom file, and then pull. And then what this does is it kind of dislodges the GP cone and then it's pushed out quite nicely. Another great thing about getting, um, you know, obturation materials out early is obviously you're going to be um, irrigating this tooth all the way through. So, you know, you, you're giving this distal canal loads and loads of time to be irrigated because what you're going to do is you're going to be irrigating the other canal spaces as you remove the silver points, but you're just going to cheeky just pop, a, um, pop the needle into the distal as well and give that a good irrigation. So another reason why to get obturation, easy obturation materials out early. Again, once this obturation's out, we're going to give it more um, irrigation. And then we're ready to try and remove these silver points and I'm having a little feel around and you know they're sticking out of the canal orifice but also they're moving so this is a really really good good sign and as mentioned I'm going to use this IRS system you can see here that basically it is a cylinder or a tube and then what you do is you slip the instruments or the the obstruction over this tube and then what you do, you screw in this doweling here and that, that grips onto the obstruction or the fractured instruments and then you pull. And another thing to notice as well is it isn't lefty-loosey, righty-tighty, it's the other way around. It's righty-loosey, lefty-tighty. So sometimes when you get these IRS systems and you feel like you're sort of turning them in, um, they're not, they're, they're unscrewing. And, and, and the difficulty here is when you're using the, these IRS systems, they look really, really small to the naked eye. But when you place them in the canal, you'll notice that they are larger than you think. And in this instance, the green size here is too large. So I'm going to drop down onto the black. And, um, you know, I can feel maybe the black IRS is getting on, but um, it doesn't quite grip onto the silver point like I'd like to. And at this point, I don't know if this is the right size or not. You know, is it too big to get between the silver point or not? Or, um, or is this the right size? So I'm going to drop down to a size red. And, um, and what I notice here is when I look really, really closely, I know that the size red is too small. Um, so what you want to do, of course, is you want to slip the IRS system um, onto this obstruction and the obstruction needs to sort of poke out that window. And I think in this case, the red um, is too small for that. So I've had a quick go trying to remove the MB uh, silver point, but with no luck. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move over to the mesolingual. I know it's very, very fickle, but sometimes you can get really, really frustrated um, do it, trying to do one thing and it can you can kind of lose hope. And I know you think to yourself, oh, you know, this is too difficult. And so the, the worst thing to do is to, is to lose hope to essentially. So if you can't get one out, you, you come back to that. And, you, and in this case, I'm going to go over to the mesolingual instead. And I'm using some ultrasonic tips here just to kind of activate this silver point just to see if I can sort of dislodge it a little bit you've got to be really really super careful though because what can happen is these silver points can fracture really really easy so I'm using the ultrasonic tip on a very 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 low energy and you can see here that the silver point is obvious and it's at this point I feel like the silver point is quite uh, quite loose when I feel it with my DG endodontic probe so I I couldn't quite get the MB with the IRS system, so I'm going to use a looping device. But when I place this looping device on and I hook it up and I have a little bit of a push, I recognize straight away that actually this um, this 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 silver point is jammed in. And this is one of the great things about having a few tools in my armamentarium on removing obstruction. So I do have a looping device, but I also have the IRS system. And what you want to do is you want to 
um, you want to tailor the the system to the clinical situation. And in this case, what I would say is if your uh, obstruction that you have in the root canal is quite stuck, then the looping device isn't going to work very well um, and you're going to need to use the IRS. The great thing about looping devices, you don't need to remove a lot of dentin around the obstruction to get it out. But in this case, I noticed that um, the uh, in, I'm going to have to use the IRS system and I'm going to rem have to remove a little bit of dentin around this uh, this silver point and of course if you didn't know already removing dentin isn't great for the tooth obviously it weakens it especially in the coronal third so the removal of this dentin is going to be super 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 careful and you don't want to remove you want to remove just enough for the irs system to slip over the the silver point but you don't want to remove too much that obviously that you either cause a perforation or you weaken the tooth so i've removed quite a little bit of uh, dentin around this uh, this this silver point here. I'm going to just slip on uh, the IRS system. I'm going to get them using different uh, different sizes, and they, you know I, I managed to get it over the the silver point, the IRS system, but it keeps slipping off. And then what I do is I and what I do is I ascertain that actually uh, the black IRS size is to slip over this silver point. So another significant uh, thing with an IRS system is that when you place the IRS system over the obstruction, in this case it's a silver point, you want to make sure that the uh, the silver point or the obstruction is poking through this little window we've got on the side because that is how it sort of engages with the dowling um, in, 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 uh, to, to hook onto it. So um, really this is where magnification comes in and, and, and you're not going to see this with loops. You're going to need an operating microscope. And um, what I notice here is that the uh, silver point is poking through the, the, the window, maybe not as much as I like it to, but I'm going to just try it anyway. I'm going to just screw the dowling in to engage it, give it a bit of a wiggle, it's still holding and just have a little look. It's still in the window, give it a bit more of a wiggle and then it slips off. So I'm just going to place the IRS system on uh, again. It slips off again. And then when I place the IRS system again onto the silver point, I feel straight away that this is pushing down further. So I'm getting a good feeling from this. I feel like, you know, the, the IRS system is pushed down uh, quite significantly. And this indicates that the silver point is poking through that window uh, much more. And I give it a good tighten up. Remember, it's, it's left to tighten it up. And then um, I give it a tiny, tiny little wiggle, a bit of a tug, and then we push it out, and there we have it. This is the first silver point, and you can see here where the uh, the silver point is poking through that kind of window we've got on the IRS system. So straight away, you know, it's the last case on a, on a Friday for me with this case, and this has just made my weekend completely. So we're going to just remember to irrigate, get some irrigation down there because it's it's got full of bacteria. And then we're going to uh, turn our attention to that pesky MB uh, silver point. And then I'm just going to use, I'm going to, I'm going to learn from the mesolingual in this case. And I'm just going to remove a small amount of dentin around uh, the, the silver point. Just being careful to use it on a low energy because I don't want to fracture the silver point or damage it, of course, because sometimes you can damage it. And we can see now that there is a little bit of dentin that's been removed around this silver point. And, the, you know, there's a strong indication that the IRS will slip further on. So once we push the, 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 the IRS here, I can I know straight away that it is it has slipped quite far on again compared to last time. What I want to do is I want to just check that the uh, silver point is poking through that kind of small window. And, um, you know, we have a little look and arguably the, 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 the silver point is, is just about through that window. I'm not too, um, uh, confident that it is completely through, but again, we've got nothing to lose. We're just going to twist lock the IRS. We're going to give it a very, very small wiggle. We're not going to push it too hard. We're just going to kind of gently kind of persuade this silver point out. And when we give it a little bit of a, bit of a twist, tiny little bit of a twist and a pull, um, in this case, it pulls the silver point out really, really nicely. And, um, you know, like I said before, this is the last case um, that I have on a Friday afternoon. I was joking to my nurse, actually, that um, that I always get the difficult cases the uh, for last thing on a Friday. And this has just made my weekend completely. This is um, 
very, very, very satisfying. And of course, the most, um, the next hurdle we've got to overcome, of course, is to complete the root canal. And um, that's for a later date. And what I'd like to do is thank you for watching. If you have any criticisms, if you have any um, questions, please comment in the section below. Um, and again, I just want to remind you one way of supporting the channel is to like and most importantly subscribe to the channel. And um, if you want to take that support further, you can join the membership program that's found on YouTube. You can become a member of the channel. You get to support the channel. It's a small monthly fee. And um, you get uh, early access to content. Usually I work about three weeks ahead with the content. So if you can't get enough of these videos, you can get early access to them. And overall, thank you. And I will see you next week in the next video.